Adventures in Obscure Gaming, Episode 1. Guys, what do you think about when you think of adventure gaming in the early 90s? The very first adventure game I ever saw was Maniac Mansion. I remember a friend of mine had it for the Nintendo and going to his house after school and he was very excited to show us that you could microwave a hamster in that game. The very first game that I actually played myself was, ironically enough, Leisure Suit Larry 2. I don't know how I managed to get a hold of two instead of one, or how I got past the old school copy protection, but I did, and I played it, and it was awesome. Particularly, remember the part where you're swimming in a swimming pool and you just let out a volley of urine. That was excellent stuff for, uh, I think I was like eight at the time. Excellent stuff for an eight-year-old to enjoy on his own home computing system. I guess what I'm saying is, at the time, if you grew up in the 90s, the two biggest gaming companies, if you were into adventure games, were LucasArts and Sierra Company. LucasArts was known for making games like Sam and Max, Day of the Tentacle, and two of my personal favorites, The Secret of Monkey Island 2 and Full Throttle. The first adventure game that I ever beat without looking up walkthroughs whatsoever. This view defines true beauty. Meanwhile, Sierra Company made games like King's Quest, Space Quest, Police Quest, Quest for Glory. They even made a game called The Colonel's Bequest, which was technically a quest game, but had the word quest in it just because they loved having the word quest in their game so much. These two companies absolutely dominated adventure gaming in the 90s. If you played adventure games back then, it would probably seem like the only two companies making adventure games were LucasArts and Sierra Company. The irony, of course, is nowadays neither of these two companies even exist, basically. Certainly they don't make any adventure games. Meanwhile, the game that we're covering this episode was made by a studio that made a grand total of two games in the 90s. Pendolo Studios, a Spanish video game company founded in Madrid, came out with Hollywood Monsters in 1997, and their debut game came out in 1994. Igor. Project Igor. Project Unpronounceable was their debut project and came out at the height of adventure gaming, 1994. By then, Mist had been released. The CD ROM was just coming into popularity, and games that featured full motion video were just starting to be made a format that I'm gonna go out on a limb here and just say that probably has not stood the test of time. You'd never understand, just stay out of it, I'm warning you. Thankfully, Pandolo went with a more traditional approach when they made their game, but let's look at the box art again. So out of these three guys, an old necromancer, the janitor with some headphones on, and just the red-haired guy eating a sandwich. By far, the creepiest and the one that seems most off is the guy eating a sandwich. Why is that? Then when you actually play the game, you realize that's no guy, that's a girl. But other than that, the game itself is actually pretty straightforward. When you're playing a game, it really seems like you're playing a LucasArts game. Everything from the sounds, the music, the animations, to the interface style looks like it was ripped straight out of one of the games from their 90s catalog. So the basic story of this game is that you're a student that's getting ready to go on a field trip to the unpronounceable location, and you're trying to win the affections of this hot blonde girl. And you do it by dressing up in a gorilla costume. Uh, yeah. So this game is kind of weird at times. Not in a bad way, it's just a little off kilter sometimes, in a good way. I think overall, 
The music, art, and animation in this game all have a really high quality. You can tell somebody put a lot of love and hard work in this game, and all this added together keeps this game from being dismissed as just another third-rate LucasArts clone. In fact, the only thing that keeps this game from being a cult classic is probably the fact that a lot of the puzzles are kind of arbitrary. I mean, it's something that's very common in adventure gaming, but boy, it really, really happens a lot in this game. The other thing is there's a maze at the end of this game, which is one of the final puzzles before you can actually beat the game. It's really hard and very random. That's not to say any of these things ruin the game, because it doesn't. It's still a really good game, and I really enjoyed playing it. I hope you get a chance to check it out. Pendolo Studios is still making adventure games today. In 2001, they came out with a game called Runaway that was a really big hit for them in Europe. They made two sequels and just recently came out with a game called Yesterday that's available for Android and iPhone. Okay, that about wraps it up for the very first episode of Adventures in Obscure Gaming. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to be coming out with an episode every week, uh, hopefully and I'll be trying to get better at making these so if you enjoy them they will probably improve if you did not enjoy it well they will still improve so join us next week where we'll have another adventure in obscure gaming until then take care faked you out for a minute there didn't I yeah episode's not quite over yet but you can shut this off because all that's going to happen is I'm just going to ramble for a bit. I'm going to include this segment at the end of every episode. I'm just going to call it the weekly ramble. That seems fitting. Just going to be talking about whatever's on my mind. This week uh, I just wanted to take some time out to explain why I'm doing this series. So growing up I played a lot of video games and for whatever reason they tended to be these games that nobody else had ever played or heard of and a lot of them were games that just never stood a chance for whatever reason but had stuff going on in them that was really interesting and just really set them apart so that's what this series is going to be about is i'm going to be covering uh these games that pop culture forgot and i'm going to be trying to tie them back to stuff that people actually care about that people actually know about and the effort of hopefully getting people to give some of these games a second look and yeah so please join me on this hopeless endeavor I hope uh, you learned about a brand new game this week and was able to give it a try join me next week we'll be doing the same uh, same thing same thing with a different game that's uh, that's the basic idea, I think. And uh, yeah, all right. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week.